Good afternoon, I am Dr. Jan Needle Stitch. Is this on? Oh, good. The history of knitting is a story tale dating back very likely to the day Adam and Eve left the garden. One can readily imagine the need for sturdy warm clothing while huddled in one's cave as one comes to the realization that evolution has conveniently taken away one's protective layer of fur. The wool from the woolly mammoth is thought by many experts to have been particularly popular as it was warm, waterproof, and came in at least 50 shades of gray. The beauty of knitting is that it is relatively easy to learn. Young knitters often begin with simple scarves and hats, while advanced knitters will often work on very complex sweaters or afghans. The skill is typically passed on from mother to daughter, sister to sister, stepfather to third cousin, grandmother to milkman. Yes, almost anyone can learn to knit. For the most part, the basic stitch one learns as a child is the same stitch used in the most complicated sweaters and fanny packs. Two needles, of course, are used to knit. One holds the work while the other adds to it by drawing more yarn from the ball and joining it stitch by stitch to the finished piece. Each stitch is accomplished by thrusting the free needle through the opening created between the new yarn and the needle holding the completed work, looping the yarn back through like so, lifting the loop over the stationary needle, and sliding the working needle out free once more poised and ready for yet another thrust. While all this sounds very complicated, once learned, knitting has the reputation of being rather mundane and even boring. But it must be remembered that early knitters led very exciting lives of feeding sheep, cleaning up after sheep, shearing sheep, spinning wool from sheep, and changing diapers. So a bit of a productive downtime was considered a luxury. Knitting clubs formed in early civilization, which quickly turned into the very first official meetings, and from there grew into what we today consider the forerunner of modern governance. The mysterious silent K has puzzled linguistics experts for many years. We see it not only in front of the word knit, but there it is also at the front of the word knife, suggesting to people with PhDs and a compulsion to publish that a strong connection exists between the aggressive, one may even say violent, life of the hunter and the more passive, peaceful life of the knitter. <coughs> Excuse me. Early paintings from the protozoan period found in caves full of dead bones clearly show the two living side by side in harmony, one killing God's creatures with sharp pointy objects and the other using very similar devices to make scarves, mittens, and loincloths from the beast's fur. The vast variety of styles and materials of which knitting needles are made of has been a subject of intense study for many generations. Wood and metal tools have survived dating back to the time of the pyramids. Grave plunderers quickly discovered that many famous kings and queens were sent down the river Styx with their favorite needles by their side. Poorer folk often made do with whatever was at hand. Vegetables, for instance, are quite useful in a pinch and should not be overlooked when choosing starter needles for children, as they can be sharpened to points and yet offer no danger to the user. The blood-red robes worn by choristers in the monastery of Donnabrook, West Ireland were famously knitted by friars using carving knives as a means, it is said, to feel more intimately the pain and suffering of their Lord and Savior. Pioneers on the Great Plains used rough-hewn needles, which were made by their menfolk, often with axes and chisels. Fine artists have been known to brush aside the traditional needle for something more akin to their trade. The famous drummer Sandy Nelson was known to knit coordinated outfits for the band using a favorite pair of drumsticks.
Needles vary greatly in size, too, from the very fine, not much wider than an actual needle, to, well, quite large indeed. The largest knitting needles on record, shown here, being used in the small museum and roadside attraction just outside the city of Needles, California, are made from a set of pool sticks said to have been used by Sammy Davis, Jr. Beyond the variety of needles employed in the craft, knitters are known to spend an inordinate amount of time discussing yarn, which I find rather boring and won't go into here. Suffice it to say that some knitters spend all of their vacation dollars going to Iceland to seek out the wool of indigenous Icelandic sheep and to visit the Blue Lagoon's hot springs, often bringing their knitting along into the steamy waters. And so we see the knitted life is one consisting mostly of long stretches of tedious boredom, punctuated by short extreme periods of crisis often referred to as dropped stitch moments. And therein we see that the knitted life parallels real life in so much as we build our lives stitch by stitch, adding to the collective pile of clothing that we use for a while and we eventually pass down to smaller people or those less fortunate in developing countries as we either wear them out or replace them with newer stuff.